Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am Douglas County Sheriff uh, Darren Weekly. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here today. Uh, we're here today uh, to honor uh, Alex Mackwicks and to um, allow the family an opportunity to tell you all about this remarkable, remarkable young man. Um, this has affected, of course, the entire uh, Highlands Ranch community, the Douglas County community. Um, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office has been with the family since this horrific tragedy has occurred. Uh, we will continue to stand with this family um, through this process, through the legal process. Um, as the sheriff, uh, I am proud of my staff. Uh, they have done an outstanding job uh, investigating this horrific um, incident. Uh, the investigation is not done yet. Uh, it is still ongoing, um, and we have a lot of work to do still. Uh, we want to ensure that the district attorney's office has every bit of information that they need to move forward on this case. Uh, but again, we are here today uh, to talk about Alex. And so with that, uh, I would like to bring up Alex's mother, uh, Victoria, to say a few words. Well, hello, everybody. First and foremost, I would like to thank all of you for being here. And even more, thank you for the space you gave the family. I know you, lots of you reached out to talk about Alex, and I said I'm not ready. I think I am as ready as I can right now. And here you go. I am ready to talk. I do apologize if I will start crying. As I still cannot control my feelings. But I will be strong for him. Because his words his death cannot go silent. It cannot be another traffic death like other deaths happen in a few years. It cannot. I am not a public speaker. speaker. By no means I am a good communicator. It's very hard for me to come and talk to you guys right now because I am a very private person. But if I will remain private, his death, his loud scream of death will not be heard. And something has to happen. Something has to happen in the memory of my son. My first step would be to put a permanent memorial as a silent reminder for all kids who crosses that crossroad. No matter how safe you are, there is somebody not safe out there for you. Silent reminder for a drivers that no matter how safe you are, there are always somebody around you who is not going to be safe. My next step is to work close with the Douglas County and do something with that horrible intersection. I am there, there every single day. I come about 6.30 in the morning to be there for official time of death at 6.48. Every single morning, and I will be there for the 40 days after his death time. I will be there. I am there every single day and I see cars flying by. I think 45 is way too fast in the zone where kids constantly cross in the road. There is something has to be done there. And the third and the most important, 
people do mistakes. However, the consequences of mistakes are different. You ran the red light, nothing happened. Understandable, nothing happened. You read the light and it caused the death of innocent child who did everything safe. Why the family, why my boy has to pay the horrible price for somebody's mistake? So what called mistake? He's not the one to come home to kiss his family. He's not the one to come home to hug me. He was a very tough boy on public. He was a teenager. He was, Mom, don't kiss me when you drop me off. I'm a big boy now. He would come home. Mom, I'm home. Let's hug. I'll hear his own nose. He love and I, give, I kiss his nose. He was a 13-year-old boy. He would come home. He would do his homework cud cuddling with his plush to Benny. 13-year-old boy who looked tough in front of everybody. He was just a kid. I talked to the witness who saw, unfortunately, every single thing that moment. She said, Alex pressed the button for the green. She said, his hands were cold and he was trying to warm up and he had a smile, like he was getting for something exciting. He had his first baseball practice. Baseball was his world. Once he discovered baseball, that was it. He, I asked him, do you want to play basketball still occasionally? Any other sports in school? He was like, no, mom, let's focus on baseball. I'll be the best. I can do left and right. I'm lefty. I right. He was writing with his right hand, but he was very good at his left. He was so focused and passionate about that. That's the only thing he was talking about. He was getting ready to set up his baseball practice Thing we bought him in our backyard when I said the snowstorm is coming. Let's wait. He was excited. I, I sure hope, I sure hope the one thing is in my heart that he didn't see or feel a thing. That I sure hope he died with that smile on his face without even knowing what happened to him. I'm praying to Lord that it was just a light turned off. That's it. Not a single pain for his sovereign. That's what I'm praying for. That's it. And I will work with the Douglas County to make sure that there are no mistake can go unpunished. Laws are really weak and unfortunately it's not tough enough and I don't see the justice for my little boy. There was no justice for another boy who died back in October, back in October. on the way to school. There is no justice. These people, our law enforcement, give them a law to enforce. Give them a strong law to enforce. They are on our side, on the parents' side. Give them something to work with. Not excuses. Not excuses of the sun. Not excuses. Mistake can happen. Oh, it can happen to everybody. Well, not everybody dies. Give us a strong law to enforce. I don't know, guys, if you have any questions. I will try to answer them at, at the best I can. Victoria, I've heard great stories in 
my last name is Sigelsky, Victoria Sigelsky. My son has last name of his father, Matskevich. We have lots of Polish in our blood and his last name pronounced Matskevich. What needs to change that every single person have to think, what if it was my baby over there at the crossroad? There are lots of people who out there thinking, well, mistake can happen, you know, it was an accident, he doesn't have to be punished. And occasionally I do reply, okay, and now imagine it was your baby did everything right. If your baby was crossing on the green, your baby was getting ready. He probably didn't even see what was coming because according to the witness, he was facing the sidewalk. He was ready to get on the sidewalk. He did everything what he supposed to. It has to be a balance of what is right and what is wrong. And if it's wrong, causing somebody's death, it cannot be Mr. Minner. It cannot be Mr. Minner. If you did a mistake and violated some kind of law, it has to be more severe. So people will stop, stop breaking the law. So they will stop running the red lights because they might think about that consequences. Yes, this time I rather run a red light, not a biggie, Mr. Minner. But what if, what if it's my child over there? That's what they need to think. Yes, I think it has to go level above to the felony. In my world, death cannot be a minor thing. It's never minor. Him and his brother, that picture was taken, was on the way to park. Every time when it was a good weather, there was no force to keep them out of the park practicing. His br brother, his uh, stepbrother plays for the same team. And that shows readiness and dedication, as well as it shows that 13-year-old is still a baby. People on public can see one side of him, tough, you know, all that, all that so cool how he wanted to look in front of his friends. But look at his perfect nose. He always said to, my, to his sister, and I have a perfect nose, His chicks still were, were baby chicks. Two days before he died, we were driving. I picked him up from school. And I don't know why. It was very sunny. And I don't know why. I was trying to look and observe as much as I can from him of his childhood. That was his last shreds of his childhood, mommy's little boy. And there was a son behind him, and he, and he saw that he, I'm looking at him, and he was showing off his nose, and he was like, Mom, do I have freckles? I was like, yes, you sure do. You're sun-kissed, but they're very, very tiny, just on your nose and a little bit on the cheeks. I said, but you have a double chin. <laughs> because I like to tease my little boy. And he was like, yes, how can I get rid of it? I said, you're still a baby, you will grow out of it. And he was happy, he was smiling, he put his one earbud, and he was listening to whatever he was listening, 
he was talking to me at the same time. The next night, he came to my room. He jumped in my bed and he said, Mama, snuggle time. 13-year-old boy, snuggle time. He jumped next to me and I hugged him like a mama bear, just hugged him and we started to set up his phone. His new phone we just got gave him the night before. Uh, and that's the last time we snuggled together. I asked him, do you want to ride next morning? She was like, he was like, no, it's very good weather. I will ride my one wheel. And I said, okay, don't stay up all, all night. He was like, I will go to sleep as soon as I set up my phone entirely. In the morning, he came to my room because he uses our bathroom to do his morning hygiene. And uh, he said, mom, I'm going to school. It's a little bit early, but I'll, I'll, I'll be on my way. I was like, you sure you don't want to write? He was like, no. And that's the last time I saw my son. At eight o'clock, I, I, people who know me, they know that my son was my life. His school was on my watch. I always received his notification from school. And um, it calls a parents portal through um, Douglas County Schools. And it stinked 8.04 my child was reported absent. I called dad first and I said, by any chance, did you pick up Alex today from school or anything? He was, no, he didn't. I was like, okay, let me call school. Maybe he was just late, so I called school. I was on the longest hold ever. Meanwhile, I was hoping maybe Alex was able to set up the location on his new phone. I was just hoping for. He did, and it showed on that crossroad. I got up and I said, okay, he probably lost his phone, so he's probably late. I left the house, we live about five minutes away, walking distance from the, that crossroad. And as I come close, his dad called me, did you find Alex? I said, I did not. And I was like, oh my God, I see lots of police. I see news, there's something happened. And Alex's phone pinned to that crossroad. I start running desperately. There was a sheriff's deputy in the middle of the road. She saw me coming and she stopped the traffic. She ran to me and I asked her what happened and she was there was a car accident. I was like, tell, tell me it was not a boy on the one wheel and her, her face dropped. She was like, nothing is for sure. Nothing is for sure yet. I was like, she asked me, what was the name of your boy? I was like, Alex, he was on his way to school. And her face dropped even worse. She was like, nothing is for sure because there is still investigation. I was like, I understand. Tell me, is he going to be okay? And at that moment, I didn't want to be in her shoes because she was the one to tell her mother that he didn't make it. I don't know what happened afterwards. I just remember she took me home. Everything else is in a blur. I don't know what was happening. I was meeting people. People were coming in. I was asking questions. I was getting the answers, some answers, but none of that mattered. Now you know his last day. I'm sorry, did you want to share a story about his generosity? And his yeah. I, that was say a lot about Alex. That would say a lot about Alex. Uh, this was his first week. Thank you. His first week at school. And I know that Douglas County provides free lunches, free 
maybe not just Douglas County, I'm not following that, but uh, he had a lunch account set up for him anyway. And within two days, I got bank notification, ding, 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 that it was uh, replenished multiple times per day sometimes. And I pulled the lunch accounts from school and it was multiple transactions in the same day. I turned on my mama bear, called the school, and I said, I feel my son is getting bullied. I think my son is getting bullied because why would he buy 20, 30, 40 lunches per day? I mean, what is going on? Like small transactions, but it's all in the same day. Long story short, they investigated. They found out my son was buying lunches for every single kid who wanted something additional. He was just standing over there and punching in his number for entire lunch line. That's how he was. Another thing, half of his clothes are in his classmates' closets. Because if somebody likes something, here you go. Alex, where is your favorite hoodie? Oh, somebody borrowed it. I don't need it back. I, it's just he would give something he would really like just because somebody else liked it too. That's something you cannot teach your child. That's something he was born with. He was caring and he was, as I mentioned, goofball. He was really, he loved to make people smile, including us. I mean, there's lots of our little things at home, little jokes that I don't think it's going to matter anymore. Every night he would go to sleep. He will stop by the, my room. He will give his nose for goodbye. He will turn his butt for this slap, for his good night. He was a baby, no matter how tough he was. Yeah, um, when I was uh, thinking about the uh, the question that was asked earlier about what, I, what do I think or what do we think when we look at these pictures of Alex. I was uh, recalling uh, how gifted of an athlete he was with baseball. Um, in his last couple of years of playing baseball, I would go to every single practice and game and he would play with my, uh, my, uh, my son. Uh, they were my, my son and him they grew up together for five years, and they were the best of friends. They were the closest brothers. They were on the same team. And every time Alex would come up to bat, I would jump up with my phone, and I'd be waiting for that next home run from him. He would go thump, thump, thump with that bat. I once saw him hit three home runs in one game. I mean, he was that good. And he could bat lefty and righty. He could throw lefty and righty. And I, I wrote in his obituary that um, I would watch him fly across the home plate often with his wings spread high. And that's partially where we came up with the idea of fly high for Alex. He's flying high and even though we are grieving, I know he wouldn't want us to grieve. He'd want us to be happy and make a positive difference and change and learn from this, learn from his example because he was the model example and I am honored to have helped raise him for the past five years and I will truly miss him and his community will miss him and it shows by the hundreds of people that supported us. That's all I got to say. I would say it was in thousands, not hundreds. And for all people who reached out to me out there Sometimes I did not reply. Sometimes I just put the heart next to your reply, but I did read every single message, every single one message, and those communications were in thousands. And I know the, not Douglas County parents, but I truly hope that all Colorado parents will stand with us for the changes. All Colorado, because it's not, Douglas County problem. It's the Colorado. We have to do something for our kids. We need to make sure they're safe and 
I just want all parents, parents of Aurora, parents of Thornton, parents of Arvada, Littleton, Highlands Range, I just want them to realize that we together, only us, all of us together can do something. We have to be heard. Our message has to be heard. Hello, everyone. I'm Alexander's father, Robert Matskevich. I would like to say a little bit about my son. I, as a father, would never have thought that I would have to see the day I have to bury my own son Alexander Robert Matskevich. Alex was my little boy, and no matter how fast he was growing up, I treated Alex like he still was one. Alex was very popular, had a great personality, and many friends. Alex loved snowboarding and hitting every jump he saw and going to the rail park. One of Alex's favorite things about the mountains was the views. He would always say this to me, Dad, look at the beautiful views and begin to take pictures and videos of it. Friday was our favorite day, but now it is an empty day. That day, I always picked up Alex from school, and we had chicken filet meal with a vanilla shake. It was our favorite day of the week, and now it brings sadness, loneliness, as well as empty week weekend as Alex stayed the entire weekend with me and his big brother. The favorite things they liked to do was to play catch, video games, and make dinner together, or just order their favorite cheese pizza. When I got Alex a one wheel for his 13th birthday, he instantly loved it more than snowboarding and a dirt bike riding, and we could not get, in, get him off of it. I remember that once Alex unpacked it, the one wheel, an hour later he already knew how to ride it, and to this day I still don't know how to get on it. Alex's dream was to be a baseball player. He was looking forward to his spring baseball season, but did not get to make it to his first practice. This year, Alex just learned how to bat both right and left-handed and was naturally lefty and loved to play center field and catch fly balls. There was no better feeling for all of us being at the games watching Alex plays play, but now it's just a memory. Traffic safety for school kids should be a prior priority, and no parent should ever go through this. Alex was a sweetheart. Alex was handsome. Alex was my pride and joy. Alex was a young star and talented at everything he did. He was loved by everyone and will be missed by everyone. My life will never be the same, but all the memories with will be within me forever.
I, I don't know what else to say, so... The last thing I would like to say is thank you for the support from everyone out there, from the community, because it did show how much support we received. Thank you. My brother, well, first of all, my name's Elena. I'm his older sister. There's a lot to be said about my brother, a lot more things than what my parents all had already said before. But he was a really charismatic kid. He was always very, very happy. He, it was, it was to a certain extent weird because nobody could be that happy all the time. There's, it's just not, it's not natural, but that's just the way he was. Um, I remember specifically, I came home from college one day and I'm an uh, engineering major and I was very excited about like everything that I've had to experience from college. All of my classes, my friends, everything. And my mom is my witness. I was very annoying about like, oh, I love California. I love everything I'm doing. And my brother, I never really paid attention, but apparently my brother was listening to all of this. And he realized how much I really was enjoying my career. Um, and the next time I came back home to visit, I see that my brother has taken the same interest as in me. He tells me, I want to go to Davis. I want to be an engineer. I was thinking, first of all, copycat, that's my thing, but <laughs> it really showed that he was just a kid. He looked up to specifically me because I'm his older sister, but also you could really tell that he really focused on everything that he, re that he liked. My mom said he chose baseball. He decided to be the best baseball player. He practiced everything, but then also specifically with what I'm doing, like engineering, I come home and I see that he made himself a 3D, like obviously he bought, my parents bought the 3D printer, but he set it up all by himself. I've been taking classes, I'm paying tuition to learn everything that he learned by himself in a dark room online. Everything that he was doing was incredible. He did, CAD, he knew how to do everything, really impressive for a 13 year old. He was so smart and he was so dedicated to everything that he liked. Like if he was inter interested in something, he didn't go halfway. He hyper-focused and he was there until he knew everything there is to be known about something. He was very caring, He's a little sweetheart. He, something that's not normal from a 13 year old boy is taking care of his 20 year old sister when he's 13 or in my case back then it was I was 18 and it was just how can a baby be this responsible how can he go out of his way to like be empathetic because usually little boys aren't that empathetic <laughs> they see they say things they do things but that wasn't in his nature he was always very very sweet and it's we were talking to, uh, about him in the past tense because as a sibling, especially our age, you don't expect to be talking about your little brother in the past tense, about who he was, what he wanted to do. Being an older sibling, you see that it breaks your heart knowing that he's not gonna grow up and he's not gonna do the things that you were so excited for him to do. So eventually, get into high, go to high school, go to prom, graduate, start college, start really discovering who he was. And I was so excited for that for him because it was such a journey for me, but now it's kind of empty. My brother was everything that I wanted to be, despite the fact that he was younger. I wanted to be empathetic the way he was. Sadly, 
I could never achieve what could be done naturally. I wanted to be as smart as he was to just get things the way he did. Now I always took me that extra mile. I always wanted to be able to be that person that you can talk to the same way that he was. I was having full on adult conversations with an eight year old and I probably told him things that I shouldn't have. It's not age appropriate, but he was there and he just understood it. He understood everything. The entire reason I met my boyfriend was through him because we were swiping on Tinder together and he swiped on him. <laughs> he was just, he was a friend. He was very easy to talk to. Feels a little hollow now knowing that I won't have that again. Thank you. If anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Okay. So, uh, as the sheriff of Douglas County, uh, I will be working with the family when the time is right to meet with our local legislators for potential changes in the traffic code. Alex's life was taken in a moment because of the driving actions of an individual. Careless driving resulting in death carries a maximum of a thousand dollar fine and one year in county jail. A maximum. This family lost a son, they lost a brother, and on top of all that, the justice system is likely going to fail them as well. That's not right. This kid deserved to grow up. People need to pay attention when they are behind the wheel and focus on nothing else. And if they are in doubt, they slow down and they stop before proceeding. Uh, I can't go into too much more detail about this other than to say that we will be side by side with this family and fighting with them now and moving forward to bring about, about appropriate change in the state of Colorado. Because what has happened to this family should not happen to any other families. And so my hope is during the next legislative session that we can bring about, about appropriate change. Uh, they will never have the justice that they need, but Colorado needs to do better to protect victims and to protect families and to protect other people out there on the roadway. Uh, is there any questions? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, since I had become the sheriff um, a little over a year ago, we've nearly doubled the size of our traffic unit. Traffic safety, traffic enforcement is important to me as the sheriff of this community. And um, it's important that people pay attention uh, and through, through enforcement. And, uh, you know, our goal is voluntary compliance. But uh, when that fails, you need enforcement and people need to pay attention. And so we've made an emphasis on that, on that since I have been the sheriff. Um, but uh, people tragically uh, die uh, in motor vehicle accidents uh, or as pedestrians throughout this entire state on a regular basis. And it's a headline for a day or two and then people forget. And so uh, our objective is to make people not forget and to realize that when you're behind the wheel, um, it's important to be paying attention at all times. And people go about their day-to-day -day lives driving their motor vehicles to and from it anywhere they go and uh, they lose focus on what's truly important and that's what you're doing behind the wheel and so uh, we don't want Alex's death to be in vain and uh, we want to 
uh, be able to uh, bring about change. And unfortunately, a lot of times change does not occur until there's a horrific tragedy. And so uh, we're not going to let this be another headline for a day or two and then move on until the next child dies. Uh, we're going to do what we can to make change now. Um, we, the county has not had a recording mechanism for traffic cameras. Uh, you may recall a couple months ago that there was a shootout in the middle of Inverness, in the middle of an intersection. Uh, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office, uh, members of my staff uh, and uh, myself have gotten with our county commissioners uh, and we found funding to start recording these cameras and have being able to pull uh, those recordings. And so. Uh, unfortunately, that's that's not uh, happening until April 1st. Uh, it's it's a little bit late, uh, but moving forward, um, we're happy to say that that there has been some change in county government, and we will be able to start pulling video from these cameras. Any other questions? Okay, uh, I very much appreciate everybody coming today. Um, thank you very much.